my name is Margaret McCullough. I am a master's student at the University of Maine, where I've been working on a series of research projects looking into various weed management strategies for organic grain growers operating in New England. In the upcoming narrated presentation, I'll provide a brief introduction to camera-guided cultivation systems. I'll review how it is that they function and also talk about their applications for inter-row hoeing in cereal crops. So thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy the following talk. At the bottom of this slide, I've provided my contact information. So for folks who may have questions about any of the material provided, please feel free to send along an email. For farmers who are growing organic small grains in New England, weeds certainly remain their foremost production challenge. To illustrate the severity of weed pressure that growers are up against, here is one of my favorite photos taken of a field of spring wheat that's really heavily infested with a particularly troublesome weed for a lot of grain growers, wild radish or raffinus raffinistrum. You can easily pick out this weed species in the field due to its brightly colored yellow flowers. This second photo was taken in a different grower's field, and here we're looking down into the crop canopy where a multitude of weed species, in this case, are contributing to this grower's weed problem. Heavy weed infestations like this one and what we saw in the previous slide are problematic because they threaten to reduce grain yields and grain quality. They can interfere with harvest and also create conditions within that crop canopy that are conducive to the development of disease. At the University of Maine, we've conducted a few experiments that have investigated inter-row hoeing in grain crops. And while inter-row hoeing is not a practice that has been readily adopted by small grain growers here in New England, it is common practice in Northern Europe and has the potential to provide superior weed control for growers here in the Northeastern United States. In research performed at UMaine that was published back in 2010, Wide row planting with inter-row hoeing was found to be an improved strategy for controlling weeds when compared with our region's standard practice. So with this system, row spacing is increased from the standard six to seven inches that grain drills often plant at to approximately nine inches. And this increase in row spacing allows room for inter-row hoeing to be performed throughout crop growth. So in essence, this is growing and cultivating a cereal crop, much like a row crop. This wide row system with inter-row hoeing was largely inspired by organic grain growers operating in Northern Europe. And in a study that was performed in Denmark back in 2003, which observed the effect of inter-row hoeing in a crop of winter wheat, which was grown at this wide row spacing, researchers found that in comparison with plots that were not weeded, inter-row hoeing reduced total weed biomass by 60 to 70%. When erect and taprooted weed species were considered, weed biomass was reduced by 50 to 90 percent. A second strategy I'm currently finishing up data analysis and summarization for looks into the band sowing cropping strategy. And this is a system we saw innovative farmers using in Sweden to combat intractable perennial weed problems. So with this band sowing strategy, the area where the crop is planted is extended from a single file row to a wider five inch band. In addition to that, weeds are aggressively controlled within the area between the bands with interband cultivation or hoeing throughout crop growth. If you're interested in hearing more about our research regarding the band sowing strategy, I've provided a link to a separate narrated presentation below in this video's description box. This video delves much deeper into the rationale behind this strategy and also experimentation that we've performed to test its overall ability to control weeds. A third system that we're interested in trying out with growers is to not alter the crop spatial arrangement and go ahead and cultivate at those narrow six to seven inch rows that grain drills already plant at and growers here in New England have. New precision ag technologies such as GPS sensor and camera guidance systems are making this a potential option since they allow for cultivation to be performed very close to the crop row. 
In fact, in 2010, researchers in France who were using a camera guidance system were able to successfully cultivate cereals sown at a six inch row spacing at a speed of just over six miles per hour. There are multiple options to consider for guidance systems when inter-row hoeing in small grains, some of which are low-tech and some of which are high-tech. When considering these options, accuracy or how close they can successfully operate to the crop row, efficacy, the percentage of weeds killed, and efficiency, which integrates how fast the tractor can be driven while operating, are all going to be important factors to consider. The accuracy of low-tech guidance systems varies quite greatly and sometimes requires extra labor. Low-tech options for inter-row hoeing includes cultivators that are reliant on furrows for steering, ride-upon cultivators that require another operator in addition to the tractor driver to steer the cultivator, front or belly-mounted equipment that improves the tractor operator's line of vision and requires less strain, and then of course, rear mounted cultivators that require the tractor driver to look over their shoulder to steer and thus leave significant amount of space on either side of the row left uncultivated in order to avoid taking out crop plants. With the advent of GPS sensor and camera guidance systems, however, improved accuracy and working rates open up opportunities for greater adoption of inter-row cultivation in cereals. Last year, we purchased a Garford Robocrop side shift unit, which is a camera guidance system for inter-row cultivation. And this unit will be used to continue advancing our research into hoeing cereals. So here's the side shift unit. It's installed between the hitch and the toolbar that is outfitted with cultivators on the back of the tractor. Housed within the side shift unit, there are two hydraulic cylinders that are able to move the toolbar to the left and to the right. The camera is attached to the same toolbar as the cultivators and information that is gathered by the camera is transmitted to a computer that's inside the tractor cab. Here we have a view from inside the tractor where we can see the computer console rigged up and again here we've got information that's coming in from the camera that information is processed by the computer and puts out a signal causing those hydraulics to fire, thus moving those hoes back and forth following the crop rows. Prior to operating the camera guided cultivator, there is some setup that's required before a grower is able to get out there and begin cultivating. Information that first must be programmed into the computer console includes the camera height, the look ahead distance, the crop's row spacing, and the crop's height. The bar or stand holding the camera up must be at a 90 degree angle from the soil surface. And once that's squared away, the camera height is simply the distance from the ground to the camera's lens. The look ahead distance is measured by dropping down from the camera's lens at a 90 degree angle to the soil's surface. And then a measure is taken from there to the center of the camera's line of vision. Row spacing is the next piece of information that needs to be entered in, and this is pretty self-explanatory. It's the space between the rows within the field of vision of the camera. This information gives the computer a frame of reference of sort for what it's trying to see as it follows those rows. I also want to mention that if the row spacing varies among those rows that the camera is looking down upon, that can be accounted for in this programming stage and will increase the accuracy of the system. I mention this since it's the case for a lot of grain drills that spacing varies slightly between rows. The last measure that's entered into the computer console is the crop's height. Again, quite self-explanatory, it's just the height of the crop. And that's it. With this information dialed in, the camera essentially knows where it is in space in relationship to the crop, and it knows the spacing between the rows that it's looking down on, which will be used to track the cultivators. 
Once this information has been uploaded to the console by the grower, it can also be saved. And therefore, if conditions don't change, that grower can, for example, select their barley setting, let's say, and get right out into the field and cultivate. To talk a bit about how the camera operates, it's positioned to look down and to see those crop rows positioned beneath it. I also wanna make a note as to what we're doing in this photo here. We're in the process of setting up the camera and therefore we've got a tape measure, a wrench, and some PVC pipe in line with each row. And we're just double checking to make sure that everything is aligned correctly. But we can imagine without those obstructions, when the machine is in operation, this would be a likely view from above. The way in which the camera and the computer quote unquote see or recognize the rows as rows is by identifying them as an aggregation of green pixels as opposed to brown pixels. Because we've already told the computer what the camera should expect to see regarding the distance between those rows, the camera and the computer already have a mold per se to go off of when it's looking down to try to identify those aggregates of green pixels which make up the crop row. And as I've mentioned before, the information that the camera gathers and the computer processes is then translated into a firing of those hydraulic cylinders guiding the hose back and forth following the rows. So now that folks hopefully have a better understanding of how this camera guided hoe functions, in upcoming field seasons, we hope to integrate this piece of equipment into our research program by bringing it into on-farm trials to have farmers interact with it, gain hands-on experience using a guidance system, as well as gain experience uh, integrating inter-row hoeing into their small grain crop production. We'd like to compare the camera guidance system's efficacy and efficiency with that of alternative guidance systems. And we'd also like to work through budgets to determine the economic viability for growers who may be thinking about investing in precision guidance technologies. Last but not least, we'd like to do some work looking into how weed density may affect the tracking accuracy of the camera. To end this presentation, I'd like to extend a big thanks to all those folks who have helped with this work, of which there are many, as well as the funders of this work, whose information is shown at the bottom of this slide. Finally, on this last slide is the literature cited for those research reports discussed during this presentation. And I'll end by reminding you that my contact information is on the first slide of this PowerPoint. And if you have any questions, please feel free to send me an email.